Okay, so now we're supposed to be looking at this, right? So the mutation stuff. Can anybody just let me know what we already understand from mutations? What is it that we already have garnered from this section? What is a mutation? What are the famous um, mutations? Go ahead. They're basically when um yeah the the <clears throat> This sequence of genes have been like altered, like whether it be via like deletion or like stuff like that. Okay, so we're gonna have to alter. Well, we're gonna have alternate genes being created, right? After we alter them, we're gonna get alternate genes, where they're gonna be different from the genes that we normally have. Okay, anyone else? All right so that's generally that's roughly what we're talking about here you now so ge mutations generally we know that there are changes in the genetic sequence right in the dna sequence when there are various things that can result in different changes in the dna sequence and that will result in some amount of mutation right so let's look at what we are talking about so how do these mutations arise Right, we know that there can be an error in the DNA polymerase or other cellular processes, right? So when we're looking at DNA replication, we're going to be going back to this, right, in a few. So when we're looking at DNA replication, right, there can be errors in PCR. There can be errors in DNA polymerase, right? All are the different cellular components that we look at. So if there's an error in some amount of the machinery that we use to replicate DNA, we can actually have mutations arising from that. Mutations can also be induced by external factors such as radiations, chemicals, and environmental factors like UV lights, right? So when we were doing chemistry, well, oh, chemistry unit 2 would look at this. So in chemistry unit 2, we'll look at that, right? Additionally, mutations can be inherited from parents as well. So if they occur in germ cells, Remember the germ cells that we're talking about? Remember the spermatogonia, the oogonia, right? If there are actually issues in those sperm cells, not in the sperm cells, in the germ cells themselves that produce gametes through gametogenesis, that means that almost all the gametes may have the mutation, right? So if the oogonia in a female, right? has some amount of mutation like carried on from the mother right then her eggs have a probability right of having that mutation as well so the child will grow up with the mutation itself right so these genetically inherited diseases can occur through that all right so let's have a look at this now we have stuff called point mutations right so we're looking at things like substitution. In substitution, a single nucleotide base is replaced by another. For an example, an adenine may be replaced by cytosine. That is substitution. Insertion. One or more nucleotide bases are added to the DNA sequence. This shifts the reading frame and can lead to significant changes in, in the resulting protein. So here we have insertion leading to a frame shift new mutation. We also have deletion, right? So hopefully everyone's following so far. We also have deletion. Um, let me just. Oh no, no, no. Why this thing? Okay, so we also have deletion in the case where let me just accept a person, right? Where one or more nucleotides are actually removed from the DNA sequence. So in this case, we're gonna also have a frame shift mutation occurring. So we've got this now. In one we have insertion so let's we're looking at these nucleotide bases right guanine adenine guanine adenine cytosine thi um thymine thymine um then adenine and cytosine right you have this base here nine bases right so let's say here now we insert a base a right so it's between this the c and the t here we insert a base a here right we're gonna have an insertion so in, if we insert a base a then a base t would be added here in order for it to actually go through the hydrogen bonding necessary so we're gonna have this base here 
So now we're gonna end up with 10 bases. So we just inserted a new column, a new area. Right, that's insertion mutation. For substitution now, we're changing, let's say, an A for a C. So if there was an A there, right, we replace it, right? Well, no, in this case, we're actually replacing the C for an A. Based on how the diagram looks. The A comes in and the C goes out. So replacing the C with an A, right, in that case here, we have the substitution reaction, right, or substitution mutation. And then in deletion now, we just lose right we just lose the nucleoside and we end up with a shorter chain right so this makes sense right this makes a lot of sense right are we following all right it makes a lot of sense right so let's see okay lovely right so here we're gonna have an indel mutation or what we call the frame shift mutation so in the first part we're looking at what happens if we deleted something if we delete it, we're going to be shifting the entire frame. So what we're looking at here is if we delete that the adenine right here, this adenine, right? Then it will cause the glycines and the other bases to shift down, right? So if you create a space, it's like if you have a stack of books and you remove a book from the center, the entire stack of books will shift down. It's a frame shift mutation via deletion. Right? If we have insertion now, that will push this frame right now. Right? So that will shift the frame now. So let's say that if you have a stack of books and you insert a book in the middle, it will push the frame up. Right? So we have frame shift mutations. So mutations that occur from insertions or deletions of nuclear bases that are not multiple of three. Right? This disrupts the reading frame of the genetic code, leading to drastic changes in the, res the resulting protein sequence. So that's what's happening here. So frame shift mutations are really, really interesting. Okay. We have other types of mutation that we don't really look at in biology, in CC biology. Well, not Cape biology, rather, unit one. But I include them here nonetheless. So silent mutations are point mutations that doesn't result in a change in the amino acid sequence of the protein. So this can occur when the altered codon still codes the same amino acid to redundancy, due to the redundancy of the genetic code. So let's say I need AGA to code for a protein A, right? But I can use AGT to code for the same protein. So if I have that mutation occurring, it doesn't matter because it's a silent mutation. It doesn't do anything. It still codes for the same amino acid, right? We have a missense mutation. In this case, no, there are point mutations that result in the substitution of one amino acid for another pro in the protein sequence. So this can lead to changes in protein structure and function depending on the properties of the substituted amino acid. So in the missense mutation now, what we have is that the mutation that occurred in the genetic code actually changes one amino acid in the structure of a protein for another. All right? And in nonsense mutations now, right, there are point mutations that introduce a, perm a premature stop codon into the mRNA sequence, right? So we know about stop codons and paradigm shifts, uh, well, pa um, palindrome shifts and stuff like that from DNA rep replication. In this, this case, now we have a stop codon. So nonsense mutations, basically what it's doing, you know, is that as we read along the protein, well, the, um, the DNA, we're creating our protein, but a mutation um, is in the protein, well, it's a mutation is in the DNA, rather. DNA is a protein, same way. Right. Well, technically, it's a nucleoside, it's not a protein. But what we have the DNA specifically saying now is that if we have a mutation that introduces a stop codon, we're going to stop creating that protein halfway in the middle. Right? So in nonsense mutations, we have the introduction of a premature stop codon. Right? And what that basically does is terminate protein synthesis prematurely, leading to what we call truncation or a non functional protein. So basically, we stop the protein before it's time. We stop the protein synthesis before it's time. And now we have a protein that doesn't really do anything. All right? So let's have a look at this now. In silent mutation now, right? We have, for valinine, we have GTA, right? But for valinine, we can also code using GTT. So when the A is replaced for T, it still codes for valinine. So it's just a silent mutation, all right? Missense now, right? What we have here in the... Um, 
in this um, molecule here, we're going to have three C's. But if we replace one of the C's for an A, we're going to have tyrosine. We're going to have the creation of a different molecule. So in, mi in the missense mutation, right, we have the different nucleotides. So we switch out one nucleotide for A, another, right? And then in nonsense mutation, no. What we have here is tyrosine, right, TAC. But TAG is a stop codon. Right? So what it does is replace the C for a G and it creates a stop codon so it stops right there. Right? So that's what's happening. So those are the three other types of mutations that we could look at. Okay, are there any questions or concerns that's related to types of mutations this one? Any issues? Any issues, concerns? doesn't look like there are any so let's move on so we have chromosomal mutations as well right so this really happens within the chromosome itself so it, inv it involves changes in structure of the chromosomes so let's say we have duplication where parts or portions of the chromosome are duplicated leading to, an to extra genetic material you have that as well so we duplicate parts of the chromosome leading to extra genetic material. We have deletion, so portions of the chromosomes are lost, leading to loss of genetic material. We have inversion, a portion of the chromosome is flipped in orientation. Right? So we flip the orientation of the, orientation of the general um, DNA, the genetic material. We inverted it. And we also have translocation, where segments of chromosomes break off and reattach to different chromosomes. So notice that translocation is a form of crossing over, right? If we have meiosis, right? So it's basically what it's basically similar to crossing over. So in meiosis, we're gonna have some type of translocation of different alleles onto different chromosomes. But what happens when translocation occurs within the same cell when it's not when it's in the interphase? That's going to be a detrimental mutation, right? So these are different types of chromosomal mutations that we look at in um, unit one biology, all right? So we look at different types of mutations. All right, now, when we look at mutations, no mutations can actually allow diseases to arise. So we're gonna be looking at what is outlined in syllabus, sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, PKU, and Down syndrome. So in this case here, now we look at sickle cell anemia. It's a point mutation, right? And it affects the beta globulin gene, the HBB, Right, and this is a part of the hemoglobin structure. Right? So, amino acid change now. Glutamic acid is substituted with valinine at position 6 on the beta globulin chain. What type, of what type of point mutation is this? Could anybody tell me what type of point mutation this is? Um, substitution. Hmm... It is a misinstitution. Because in substitution, right? Remember, in substitution, what we're talking about is a singular nucleotide. Right? But if we replace a, one amino acid for a completely different amino acid, glutamic acid for valine, that is a misense mutation. Right? So it is a substitution I'm of sorry. one amino Go ahead. I kind of get what you're saying. But, um... Based on the syllabus, we only look at substitution, deletion, and addition. So based on the different cake books, mm -hmm. um, sickle cell is called, um, fall under um, substitution where they substitute, well, GAL for VAL, based okay. on the books and the syllabus. All right. Okay, fine. Okay. All right. So if you look at it like that. All right. Thank you for letting me know. All right. So, missense and nonsense and uh, silent is not in the syllabus? No, sir. Okay. So, in that case, no, then we'll just start call it a substitution. Because <laughs> what we're doing is substituting one amino acid for another. So, fine. That's lovely. Right? But with the context that if we're looking at the greater overarching value of mutations, it would be missense. But it's a type of substitution. All right, so the syllabus asks us to just say substitution, it's fine. All right, so we're substituting glutamic acid for valanine at, valanine at the sixth position of the beta goblin chain. All right, so that is that. 
And what is the effect now? This substitution alters the structure of hemoglobin, leading to the formation of abnormal sickle-shaped red blood cells, which can cause blockages in blood vessels and impair oxygen delivery. All right? So that's what's happening for sickle cell anemia. But for cystic fibrosis, this is a deletion mutation, right? In this case, no, right? Cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, CFTR gene. That is the gene that is affected, right? So the amino acid change now, we have a deletion of phenyl uh, phenylalanine, right? At position 508 on the CFTR protein. So this is a deletion mutation. What is the effect of this deletion of phenyl phenylalanine, right? What we're gonna ha have here right is that the deletion really disrupts the function of the protein itself remember it is a frame shift mutation right so this is the protein is responsible for regulating the flow of chloride ions across cell membranes we're gonna be looking at that in unit 2 biology and look at the setup of action potentials and stuff like that right so this function of proteins leads to the accumulation of thick mucus in the lungs and other organs right so that's what we have there as with cystic fibrosis right lovely deletion mutation where the gene that is affected and we have what is really happening deletion of phenylalanine at the 508th position of the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene <laughs> right so we have that there okay right when we talk about phenylketonuria now, PKU, it's a missense mutation. In this case, let's call it a substitution mutation, right? It's what's happening on the phenylalanine hydroxylase gene, right? So the amino acid change now, phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme is either absent or defective due to the mutation, right? So we have a defective or absent, absent gene there, right? Um, that's really affects the enzyme so what's happening in these patients now this mutation results in the accumulation of phenylalanine in the body right which can lead to intellectual disabilities seizures and other neurological problems if left untreated so if we have the if we increase too much phenylalanine in the body it can really cause these problems and that's why if we have a gene that affects the hydroxylase enzyme which destroys or hydrolyzes phenylalanine right we're not gonna have the enzyme actually working if there's a genetic mutation therefore we're gonna have nothing to destroy the phenylalanine right therefore it will just continue being produced when we have too much right the accumulation in the body will cause these issues all right so that's what's happening for phenylketonuria. All right, PKU. What's happening for Down syndrome now? We have a chromosomal abnormality now. So what we're looking at is a chromosomal mutation. Right, it affects chromosome 21. Right, the amino acid change now. There's no specific amino acid change. Right? Know that there's no specific amino acid change. That is not how chromosomal mutations really work. But rather an extra copy of chromosome 21 leading to the imbalance of gene in gene expression. So now we have more genetic information and it will lead to an imbalance in gene expression. In effect, now the presence of the extra copy of chromosome 21 disrupts normal development and leads to characteristic physical features, right? Um, intellectual disabilities, right? An increased risk of certain health conditions such as heart defects and Alzheimer's disease in later life or later in life, right? So that's what the Down syndrome really looks at. Right, so in the syllabus, what we're looking at is the sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, phenylketonuria, and Down syndrome as a part of the syllabus. All right, so those are diseases that we look at. Now, I have a question per se. Right, the question is no. I want somebody to discuss or just explain to me in their own words and how they understand it. Right. How do you think mutation can change right, um, a species? How can mutations um, bring about variation? How do you think mutations um, can Go ahead. Okay, so 
I would say the uh, mutation can bring about variation. For example, like let's say they're like two birds, mm-hmm. um, like the environment that they're in, only the ones with like larger beaks can like get the food, so they would survive while the other species would die, so they would become the new species. Like, All right. So if we yeah. look at, so when we go into um natural selection, we're gonna look at Darwin species that you're describing on the Galapagos Islands, right? So let's say that for the food there, you need larger beaks in order to consume it. Therefore, all the birds with the mutation, with that mutation, with that variation with larger beaks, right, themselves, right, will actually carry on and produce offspring and lead to the variation of a species, right? Okay, we have speciation going to be occurring. When we orish um, natural selection, then we talk about speciation and allopatric speciation and temporal speciation and all those type of things that, are, that comes from the mutations that occur in organisms that allow them to benefit right in their environment we're going to talk about this right so why is it important that we actually have um variation why is heritable variation important in selection specifically we're going to be discussing that actually in natural selection as well all right so that is really it for the variations via mutations that we're looking at